Hi there. Um, in this video, we're going to look at the equation of a circle in standard position. And, uh, you know, usually in math we do things like lines and we graph parabolas and things like that. One of the cool things is uh, you can have a circle if you punch in this equation that you see right here. If you punch in that equation um, into a program like Desmos. Um, if you do that, if you type in x squared plus y squared equals 25, you'll end up with a circle that looks like this. And I encourage you to do that. Just go to desmos.com. It's right here. Um, www.desmos.com. Um, it's the best calculator I've seen online. It's free. And uh, you, can type, you can type it in very quickly, and you'll see the result right here. Um, so what we should learn about a situation like this is that when you when you type in, let's see, if you type in a number here, I'm going to put 25. Um, just make some observances right now. Look at the circle here and see if you can see what the radius of the circle is. Remember the radius of a circle is from the origin, in this case, to the outside. And all the circles we'll be looking at today in this video are centered around the origin, okay? Of course, you can get more difficult with uh, graphing these kinds of things, and um, you know, we can have circles that are not centered on the origin, but this is just an introduction, so let's just, let's just stick with that for now. What you do need to know as one of the first things is that the radius of this circle, when you type a 25 right here, look at the radius here, it goes from 0 to 5. Okay, so the radius is, is the distance from the center to the outside of the circle. And you'll notice that it is 5 units. Okay, it's 5. And the square root of 25 happens to be 5. So what if I were to type 16 on the end here? As you guessed, the radius from here to here is 4. Okay, from the origin to the outside. And that's something you have to learn right off the bat. So here we are back to our smart board stuff. Um, let's go to the next page here and we'll see the kinds of questions that you can get when it comes to these circles. So in general, this is what an equation of a circle looks like in standard position when the center is at the origin. Okay, and this is what it looks like right here. Okay, um, let's look at a question right here. This, these are the kinds of questions you'll get at the start of this kind of topic. What is the equation for a circle with center 0, 0 and the radius of 4? Well, if the center is at 0, 0, you can just type or write x squared plus y squared. And you don't need to worry. As we get more complicated with circles and the origin change and the center changes away from the origin, you'll end up getting brackets and x plus or minus, you know, 1 and etc. But for now, remember, we're just sticking to circles with the origin, with the center at the origin. Now it says the radius would be 4. Now if you remember from before, if the radius is 4, then the number right here is going to be the square of this. So the square is if you would go 4 squared that would give us 16. And the opposite of squaring is the square root. So we know if we write this formula, in, if we write this equation into Desmos, the radius is going to be 4. And we just did that. Okay, there's the same exact equation. All right, so let's look at some more questions that could come up. What is an equation for a circle with its origin at the center? Okay, very good. And passing through this point. Interesting. So Let's see, it's going to be 6 and negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Way down here. So they're asking, the center is here, and here's our circle, and we should have a point that passes through at 6, negative 8. How could we figure that out? How could we get a circle to have to have um, the outside going right through 6, negative 8. Well, here's how you could do it. And if you forget how to do the Pythagorean theorem, okay, do you, I don't know if you remember, c squared 
is a squared plus b squared. But if I draw with red here, there's 6, negative 8. So to go from here to here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's 6. And to go down to here, I know it doesn't look like it, but it's negative 8. If it was just a length, though, it would be 6 and 8. What we really want to know here to find the equation, because they're asking for the equation, what we really want to know is the radius. We really want to know the distance of this line right here. The quickest way to do that is to use the Pythagorean theorem. And I'll let you watch that video on your own time if you forget, because I have a very quick video on that. But what I'm going to do here is just quickly find out this radius here. It's also the hypotenuse of this triangle, okay? It's the longest side of this triangle. When you're looking for the hypotenuse and you have these two things called legs here, all you do is go 6 squared, we're using the Pythagorean theorem, plus 8 squared. We get our answer, and then we're going to take the square root of the answer. So 6 squared plus 8 squared, well that's 36 plus 64. And if you add those up, if you add those up, you get 100. Now the Pythagorean theorem says that in order to get the final answer, or this, radi this radius right here, we need to take the square root of our answer to get the final answer. So you end up getting 10, and if it was centimeters it would be, but in this case it's not, it's just numbers, so it's 10 units. We now know that the radius is 10. So what would be the equation? Let's write that over here. Well, it would be x squared plus y squared. And that would equal, not 10, we wouldn't write 10 right here because that would be a very tiny circle. It's going to be 100. Now if you remember, if we take the square root of the 100, we get 10 and that tells us the radius. Now if you're a little confused by this, or if you want to check with me to see if we actually got this right, let's try typing this x squared plus y squared equals 100 in Desmos right now. Okay? So instead of 16, I'm going to put 100 there. There we go. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And the question said, the question said, is there a point that passes through this circle at 6 and negative 8? So let's go 6 across and then down here and you'll notice that it, it really does. There is a point right here at 6, negative 8. I don't know if I can get that exact. I, I think I did. There we go. If I hold the mouse down right on this spot we get 6, negative 8. By the way with Desmos if you want to you can go up over here and in brackets you can type in 6, comma, negative 8. It's really cool. It'll actually put a point there for you, and it's conveniently in a different color. It's blue. You can hit label. It will tell you the point. And there we go. You can zoom in on it. Pretty cool, eh? Desmos is very handy as you're going through a question like this, just to confirm if what you're doing is correct. Okay. There's another question down here. It says, is the point negative 5, 9 inside the circle? Well, of course, we could go and look at Desmos and see, does, that, does this point actually lie inside the circle? Negative 5 and 9. But, you know, there's another way to do it without looking at the graph or looking at Desmos. All we have to do is find the radius of a circle like this that's passing through this point. And if the radius is bigger than 10, then we know that this point would not be inside the circle. So let's quickly do that. Okay? Um, negative 5 and 9 would be, you know, negative 5 would be this way, and 9 would be way up here. It would be a point like that. And it would be, if I were to draw again that triangle, I'm going to draw it really quick here. We're looking for this radius here, and it's 5 this way. It's actually negative 5, but the distance is 5. You don't have to write a negative if you're just talking about the distance of this triangle from here to here. And 9 is this vertical distance. And then let's find the uh, hypotenuse right now. So 9 squared plus 5 squared. Well, that's like, that's like saying 81, because 9 times 9 is 81, plus 25 
What's 81 plus 25? Well, 5 plus 1 is 6, 10. It'd be 106. Now, 106 is bigger than the 100 we got before. If we take the square root of this, the answer is going to be bigger. It's going to be larger than this 10. The square root of 106 is bigger than 10. And so this point cannot lie inside the circle that we've created up here. It can't. So you would say at this point, is the point negative 5, 9 inside the circle? The answer is no, it is not. Okay, and let's confirm that. Negative 5, 9. Let's go type that in right here. Um, here, I'll just type it in right here. Negative 5, comma, 9. And let's go look at where that is on this circle. We know it's up here. And look at that. It, it, it is outside the circle. So Desmos proves us correct in this situation. Okay, hopefully this mess isn't too confusing for you. Let's have a look at the, another question that you could get. Given x squared plus y squared equals 144, state the radius of the circle and give one point on the circle. Okay, let's do that. Um, well, to find the radius, it's really quick and easy. All you have to do is take the square root of the 144. And that happens to be a really nice number. It's called a perfect square because if you take the square root of this, you get 12. So we know this is going to be the radius of the circle. Okay? That means it's going 12 in all directions. Okay, so it's, <laughs> sorry, it's a terrible circle. That means it's going 12 this way, 12 this way, 12 and 12. So if we were to state one point on this circle, I'll just pick the most quick point I can possibly do. One point on this circle would be 12 across, and we wouldn't go up or down. We'd stay on this x-axis. This is the x-axis right here. And we would just write 0 there. There, there's one point. We could give four points very quickly if it asked. If we had to do more complex points, it would be a little more tricky. But it's not asking for that. It just says state one point. Give one point on the circle. So any of those answers would be quick. Your, your math teacher would probably appreciate if you picked one of these ones because the answer key would probably say one of these quick ones as well. Um, otherwise, he or she would have to figure it out. <laughs> it would take extra time. Um, but anyway, that is the answer for given one point on the circle. Any more questions? I see this question and that is it. So here's the last question. Given 5, 2, so given 5, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, we'll put the point right there. Find an equation of a circle with a center at the origin, so the center is still here, that passes through this point. So we're looking for a circle that would pass through this point. It, here's the radius. And um, if I were to draw a little triangle, I'll just draw that right there. Maybe I'll draw a blue circle around it. Sorry, my circles are terrible. This is just freehand. <laughs> um, but anyway, here is our, we need to get a circle that has a radius of this distance right here. Well, we don't know this radius, and again, let's use the Pythagorean theorem. So it's 5 across, and it's 2 up. Let's find the radius of this line right here, of this circle. So all we have to do is go 5 squared plus 2 squared. What does that equal? Well, 25 plus 4 is equal to 29. So 29 is the number that would appear in the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 29. If they asked what the actual radius of this is, because we didn't actually find the radius up here, 29 was almost the answer, the actual radius would be the square root of that 29. And that is not a perfect square. So I would have to take a calculator, something like this. This is the one from Windows, and I'd go 29 and the square root of that. So I know that the square root is 5 point, I don't know, I'm going to round it off, 5.4. It's about 5.4. That would be the radius right here. But let's go into Desmos one last time, and let's type this in. x squared plus y squared 
is equal to 29. And let's see if it actually cuts through the point. What was the point that it was asking? Um, 5, 2. So let's type in 5, 2 right here. 5, comma, 2. And sure enough, there it is. 5, 2 is right here. We have solved this problem satisfactorily. Okay. Um, I hope that Desmos becomes something that you're able to use. You can use it from a cell phone. You can use it from an iPad or any kind of tablet. Or you can use it from your computer. It's very handy. It's a free app. Whoever made it doesn't charge anything. And um, circles, because they're not something you do in everyday life that often, it's definitely nice to have a graphing calculator like Desmos to help out. I hope this video helps explain a little bit about how the equation for a circle works. In this case, it's a circle that has the origin at the center. I guess I said that about a thousand times. No need to keep repeating myself. Have a great day. Good luck as we struggle through this pandemic together. Take care, everyone.